An ICBM, also known as an intercontinental ballistic missile, is being fired at the United States to conduct a nuclear attack. It goes without saying that if this were a full-fledged nuclear conflict, hundreds of ICBMs and submarine-launched ballistic missiles would be fired, in which case it would be cap it, pistas, and game over. A rate of hundreds of ICBMs carrying tens of nuclear weapons apiece just cannot be stopped. But it's not as easy as you may think to even intercept one ICBM. Depending on the weather, it may take up to 30 seconds to detect the launch of an ICBM. If it's cloudy, infrared sensors on either the older Defense Support Program satellites or the more recent space-based infrared system, would be able to detect the missile's exhaust as soon as the rocket rose above the clouds. Once an ICBM has been identified by several satellites, it is possible to determine the precise trajectory of the rocket, but not necessarily the intended target. Command and control must therefore make a choice. Is the missile hostile, or might it be merely a practice round? The truth is that a straightforward test launch may be perceived as aggressive and trigger a nuclear conflict. Due to rising tensions with Russia over their invasion of Ukraine, the United States has decided to suspend a Minuteman 3 ICBM test. Ballistic missiles fly through three phases of flight, the boost phase, the mid-course phase, and the terminal phase. Once the decision is taken to fire an interceptor, there would be numerous possibilities to shoot down the ICBM. Phase intercept and boost The boost phase of an ICBM is arguably the easiest, though paradoxically the least practicable, period to shoot it down. It is extremely advantageous to intercept an ICBM when it is in the boost phase and the rocket engine is still burning. It's considerably simpler to hit a monstrously sized, rather slow, hot rocket than it is to intercept a little nuclear warhead. However, it is unworkable because of the struggle against time. An ICBM typically burns for 250 seconds. As previously indicated, it can take up to 30 seconds for satellites to identify an ICBM and another 60 to 70 seconds to deploy an interceptor missile. And that's not even accounting for a decision time. With only 150 seconds remaining to intercept the missile once the ICBM has been ignited, this brings the overall reaction time to 100 seconds. The burn period of an interceptor varies depending on the model and is around 100 seconds before the missile can lock on to the heat signature and attack the ICBM structure and not fly harmlessly through the thin flame. Satellites and other ground-based sensors can direct it towards the target. Hit to kill would be the term used for this. Older and less sophisticated systems would approach the target and use a proximity fuse to set off an explosive warhead, but hit to kill interceptors use kinetic energy or the mass and speed of the interceptor to strike the target directly and destroy it. A shoot-look-shoot -shoot maneuver is used after a successful attack to determine whether the missile has been destroyed before releasing another interceptor. As a result fewer interceptors are needed to destroy approaching missiles. That is crucial, as you will quickly discover. On paper, it appears to be rather simple to stop a nuclear missile in its boost stage. In reality, Though, you face significant reach versus time difficulties when attempting to intercept during boost phase. The command and control has little time to determine whether to fire an interceptor, which is the first difficulty. The interceptor won't get to the ICBM before its boost phase ends. If making the choice takes more than a minute, ideally shorter. It was suggested that a weapon that moves at the speed of light be used to get over this time challenge. A strong laser, depending on the kind of missile, the YAL-1 airborne laser system had a range of 115 to 200 miles and was designed to take down enemy ICBMs during their boost phase. The atmosphere scattered the laser's energy more than was anticipated, however, and the laser proved ineffective. The effective range was discovered to be estimated in tens of kilometers, requiring that the Boeing 747 carrying the laser be traveling through hostile airspace. No ship, Sherlock, the show has been terminated. Range presents the second difficulty. The ICBM would be vulnerable to attack itself since the interceptors would need to be launched from a point that was very close to the launch site. Some claim that the bottom and top bounds are 30 and 620 miles, respectively. In any case, this is a serious problem. If a rocket is launched from North Korea, it could be possible to intercept it, but not if it is launched in the middle of Russia and China. Despite having the capacity to intercept ICBMs during their boost phase, the American SM-3 missile, which can be launched from either Navy ships or Aegis ashore, is not thought to be a practical alternative because of the range time issue. ICBMs cannot yet be effectively destroyed by the American missile defense system when they are in the boost phase. Unmanned aerial vehicles are the subject of research being done on new technology, though. Although the boost phase may no longer be necessary for the time being, mid-course nuclear missile destruction the longest time window for doing so is offered by mid-course phase intercept, which is roughly 20 minutes. Although it would take a lot of time, 
it might be more difficult to complete this goal than to hit a bullet with another bullet. The average speed of a ballistic missile is 15,000 miles per hour. That is nine times the speed of a typical bullet. In the mid-course phase, there are two options for Americans to intercept a nuclear bomb. Using a ground-based interceptor or an Aegis cruiser or destroyer, that can fire a standard missile 3 block 2 alpha the 40 billion dollar ground based mid course defense program one component of the american ballistic missile defense system includes the ground based interceptor its goal is to defend the united states against intermediate and long range ballistic missiles a multi stage solid fuel booster equipped with an ekd or exo atmospheric kill vehicle is referred to as a ground based interceptor exo atmospheric refers to outside of atmosphere Hence the EKV is a miniature spaceship that relies on thrusters to move as fins are ineffective outside of the atmosphere for steering. In contrast, in an endo-atmospheric environment which means with an atmosphere the vehicle can be maneuvered by the forces of the atmosphere. When the EKV is deployed, it uses onboard sensors and guidance information supplied from ground support and fire control system components to approach and destroy the target. A booster carries the EKV towards the target's anticipated location in space. The 44 ground-based interceptors held by the United States are now housed at either Fort Greel in Alaska or Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Each ground-based interceptor needs its own silo. The staggering price tag for each interceptor is $75 million. Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense is another option for destroying ballistic missiles in addition to ground-based interceptors, specifically, the SM-3 Block II Alpha which can track and intercept an intermediate-range ICBM with the use of satellites and other sensors. Engage on remote is the term for this. The SM-3 is a multi-stage interceptor that can be launched from cruisers, destroyers, and Aegis ashore. Using VLS Mark 41, a kill vehicle is sent into space by the interceptor, where it makes a maneuver to stop an approaching warhead. Range is the major problem with SM-3 interceptors. To intercept an ICBM, the launch ship needs to be situated appropriately. This is why ground-based interceptors are better at intercepting intercontinental ICBMs than SM-3s, which are only good at intercepting intermediate-range ICBMs. The situation appears to be mostly under control up until the following difficulty. Decoys during the mid-course phase decoys, a typical Russian ICBM, like the R-36 Satan, can launch what seems to be 50 nuclear warheads during its mid-course phase. However, only 10 of those, or MIRVs, or multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, are actually warheads. The other 40 are Stooges. One ICMB has suddenly become 50 separate moving targets, 10 of which must be intercepted. So that expensive interceptors are not wasted on useless decoys, the defense systems must be able to distinguish between decoys and harmful targets. We should also mention that additional material, such as nose cones, can make discrimination more difficult. Low-resolution radars can track individual objects, but they are unable to distinguish between dangerous and fake items. Because of this, the US possesses a sea-based X-band radar, whose main function is to distinguish between lethal targets and decoys, before performing precise monitoring of such warheads. Another radar that can perform a similar function is the long-range discrimination radar, at Clear Space Force Station in central Alaska. It can distinguish lethal objects from decoys and send their trajectory in real time to interceptor missiles. The $784 million LRDR building and installation project isn't complete, and the last-minute adjustments are being made in preparation for the radar's operational launch in late 2022. The EKV employs information from the aforementioned discriminatory radars in addition to its own sensors to perform target selection and discrimination. How many ICBMs can be intercepted in reality with all of this in mind. How many ICBMs do you believe the US can actually intercept, with its 44 ground-based interceptors? Consider this example to show the complexity of each ICBM having numerous warheads and decoys. A single R-36 ICBM can carry 40 decoys in addition to 10 warheads. You'd assume the 44 ground-based interceptors could successfully neutralize at least 4 ICBMs, carrying 10 warheads each, assuming the discrimination radars can accurately identify all 10 fatal warheads. But the response is not what you might expect. The likelihood of a ground-based interceptor successfully intercepting a single target is about 56%. In other words, a single ICBM with 10 deployed warheads can easily overwhelm the US ground-based interceptors and perhaps detonate on US land. It would need not two, not three, but four interceptors to boost the likelihood of intercepting a single target to 97%. The American Missile Defense System utilizes numerous layers precisely for this reason. Only a small portion of incoming threats could be eliminated by a single line of defense, but by combining many lines of defense, the last of which is the terminal phase, it is possible to eliminate the majority, if not all, warheads. When a nuclear warhead re-enters the atmosphere, 
The terminal phase starts. The final stage this phase is the last chance to intercept the warhead before it reaches its target. And it only lasts for about a minute. However, because it can happen close to the intended target, and there is minimal room for error, this is the least ideal period for interception. Keep in mind that a nuclear bomb that is intercepted does not detonate. The explosive charges in a warhead must detonate in a precise order in order for the warhead to go critical, which is necessary to start a nuclear explosion. A significant spray of radioactive elements close to the target region would be the consequence of an interception, which is not ideal, but is much better than a nuclear explosion. The Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, often known as THAAD, US Navy SM-6 missiles launch from warships or the U.S. Army's Patriot Advanced Capability 3 missiles can all be used by the American Ballistic Missile Defense System to intercept warheads during the terminal phase. There's a catch, though. The defense systems we just stated can only target short, medium, and intermediate-range ballistic missiles, despite the Missile Defense Agency diagram giving you the idea that they can intercept nuclear ballistic missiles. IBMs cannot be shot down, since their warheads re-enter the atmosphere at a speed of Mach 24 or higher. THOD's greatest speed is less than Mach 9 and it is meant to intercept missiles with speeds between Mach 5 and 8, at a maximum altitude of 93 miles, 150 kilometers, so maybe it could hit it head on, but I wouldn't put my life on it. Using nukes to intercept nukes use of endotmospheric interceptors armed with tiny nuclear bombs, is an alternate method of shooting down nuclear weapons during their terminal phase. The Russian A-135 anti-ballistic missile system employs precisely this tactic. The A-135 system may disable approaching warheads traveling at speeds of up to 15,600 miles per hour, or Mach 20, by detonating nuclear interceptors on the edge of the atmosphere in space. Who would have thought to use nukes to fire down other bombs? Conclusion The basic line is that. While it is technically conceivable to shoot down an ICBM, doing so is very difficult. Not to mention hypersonic glide vehicles that can outmaneuver defense systems or maneuverable re-entry vehicles. As rogue regimes like North Korea are thought to not be deterred, the present aim of missile defense systems is to reduce the threat of them launching ICBMs towards American soil. In other words, they might attack even if they know they would be completely destroyed. According to a recent 2022 assessment, no technology created to yet has demonstrated effectiveness against plausible ICBM threats. From North Korea too. Accordingly, the Pentagon disagrees. They are self-assured and assert that classification restrictions are to blame for the use of outmoded and incorrect data in foreign studies. A next-generation interceptor termed a never-fail weapon system is what the Pentagon is working to create. On second thinking, I suppose we'll look into it. Ideally, we won't ever have to find out.